I'm ready. <laughs> All right, Valerie, I am ready too, man. I was excited to have you on the show. Um, you and I were having a little technical difficulties, and I'm getting a little feedback still, but as long as the audio is good on your end, I think we're going to go ahead and kind of make this thing work. So, welcome. Hey, well, thanks for having me. Can you, you hear me? You know? <laughs> Can you hear me hello? now? <laughs> hello, hello. Are you there? Uh, can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me there? Better. Hello. Um, let me see. Hello. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh my gosh. <laughs> hmm. Um, just page. Valerie, hello. All right, are you there? I don't know. I don't know what the heck happened there, but I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is uh, technology had been in for me, but this is my actual first time working with our Cincinnati office. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. So let's get this thing off. Um, why don't we, first of all, let, I always get started by telling me a little bit about your real estate background. So, I mean, I know some about you that our audience doesn't know, um, but we'll get right into that stuff. How long have you been in real estate? Now? I have been in real estate basically since 2004. Okay. So I started off as a mortgage broker straight out of college. I was an economics major, and I kind of, I wasn't real excited about getting into uh, the econ field. And so I tried to figure out something where I could look at markets and see how things would work. And I got into the mortgage industry and then I got my real estate license in 2000. So I've been in the business for a little bit. Got it. Okay. And what prompted you to get into real estate? I mean, with the background, obviously, you know, the funny thing about real estate, if you get into an industry like uh, the mortgage industry, right, it's almost a natural evolution for some people to get into real estate. Um, in fact, that's what I did because in college I did mortgage, and um, and then just naturally got into real estate because I had some friends that were doing real estate. So how did you get into it? Oh man! So I bought my first house. <laughs> that's what happened. Okay. Uh, so twenty three, I think, when I bought my first house, and it was a dual agency situation, and okay. I was I was a mortgage broker. And so I knew about real estate thereabouts, but I didn't really know about real estate. I didn't know about dual agency. And for those of you watching that don't know what dual agency is, that's when you use the listing agent to represent you as a buyer. 
and don't do it <laughs> because I got completely screwed over. We, um, I paid full price for the house. Even when I said, I was like, well, it kind of needs a lot of work. Can I offer less? And he's like, nope, only accepting full price. Uh, roof looked terrible. One of the HVAC units had had a tree fall on it. I had no idea that I could ask for that stuff to be repaired or replaced. So we ended up buying a house. Um, that if I would have known better, you know, it would have saved me literally tens of thousands of dollars. And so when that happened, and I know I'm not the easiest happening to, so I'm going to get my license and help as many people not go through this experience like I went through it. Because, you know, ever since then, I've helped probably over a thousand people uh, get into a home or sell their home, and it's been good. So very rewarding, and it's a great, great profession for me. That's awesome. So um, tell me about your best year in real estate. What would that look like? And, and it doesn't have to be with transactions or or volume because we know those uh, aren't really – just because those are good years, uh, they're not just really profitable. So tell me about your best year in real estate. It's probably this year. <laughs> probably okay. this past year. Talk about and, that. Um, well, the biggest reason is because I just I started working smarter, not harder. So I had the big team. I had the agents that worked for me. I had the administrative staff. I had all of those people in place, and they cut out the profit every single month. So you know, for me, I I was personally in production as well as you know paying for a hundred percent of all the expenses. I did get, you know, percent of the, my team members' production costs, but they weren't producing as much as I was, yeah. so they weren't even picking up essentially the monthly cost. So I had this huge overhead and huge responsibility, and you know, stressful because I'm a single mother with two little kids, and so I'm responsible for them. I'm responsible for you know my employees, and their families, and it's just it was stressful. And so I finally, you know, got rid of it, and I've simplified. I'm very um, selective with who I choose to do business with. I have automated a huge portion of my business and my life has been exponentially easier and I've kept a lot more in my pocket. So, Yep. So let's dig into that for a minute because I mean, there are a lot of agents out there that are, that are they're, they're working towards building this mega team, right? And for mm -hmm. me, you, you built a mega team and you supposedly got to the pinnacle of success in real estate, right? And then you yeah. realized that you know it wasn't all it was about to do. So like when did you start to realize because you were following the narrative that everyone else followed by assume, right in the yeah. red book. And yeah, seventh level, seventh level of team. And so when did you start to realize that, you know, this may not be exactly what I'm looking for. This may be what other people are looking for, but not what I'm looking for. When I just started going through, you know, and, you know, that's know your numbers, know your numbers, know your numbers. I mean, that's what you always hear, but how many of us actually know our numbers? Yeah. We know thereabouts. We know the number of transactions. We know about what's going to come in every month. But, you know, once I really started digging in, I'm like, man, you know, this person that I've hired should have you know, at least an eight to 10 times return on the investment that I'm putting into them. They're not even close. Yeah. And so, you know, I was, you know, it was, and I, I went through recruit select a million times. I've, you know, coached personally with Brett and Bain Hinion. I've done all that stuff. And, you know, some of it was just, you know, a lot of it through the years was getting the wrong job. So going through that process and hiring and then training somebody all over again, if they don't work out and, I mean, at what point do you just have to say, you know, it's easier for me to figure out a way to go from a manual to an automated business and keep it authentic and work smarter with my transactions. So instead of doing, you know, 250, you know, 10, $250,000 transactions, do, you know, six, you know, 350,000. So it's not necessarily, you know, having to do the numbers over and over again, because with, you know, maps and with, you know, the different coaching programs I was in, it was like, you know, production, production, it's all about volume, like how many transactions you do. And so, you know, my 
my best year real estate wise where I had the most amount of GCI, I did almost a hundred closings on my own. I didn't have a team yeah. at that point. And I was run ragged, but I was listing the twenty three thousand dollar lot listings and the eighty nine thousand dollar teardowns and the, the like the crap such a headache on the other end of that because you know the people that want to buy it, you know, they're not really qualified or they're not credit worthy or you know, when the home inspection comes and you know that it needs work, they need the seller to pay for all the repairs because they can't fix it themselves because they have no, you know, savings to do that. And that just turned into its own nightmare. And, you know, it's not to say that I'm not happy that I helped those people through that process, but at some point, you know, I have to look because I'm responsible for being able to spend time with, you know, my two kids. They're only going to be tiny once. And, you know, at what point is it not worth necessarily going through that headache and shifting my business model towards a different direction? And right. so that's what I ultimately did. So it's interesting. Like, I love talking about this type of stuff because, you know, I've been going through this in my business as well. Um, I, we got to a point in 17 where we sold just over 300 homes. And um, I, I, I went on probably less than 10 appointments that year and you know, really I was talking to my wife about this at lunch today you lose a lot of leverage in your business when you give um, that much of your business over and there's some rewards to living a life like that as well um, especially if you build your culture right and your support systems right and you're very vulnerable if you haven't done that and I think I feel that doing a really good job of building that foundation because we grew so quickly and, yeah. you know, we, part of that was probably a product of, of working in a really aggressively good market, too. And it's when the market flows down a little bit or starts to correct often like it is right now that you really start to see some of the things or those cracks in the foundation. Yeah. And, you know, it's not like and, and that's the hard part. Business. Yeah. But what I love about what you're saying right now, it's like you're saying, when you say work smarter, not harder, I mean, that comes off as a okay, I think. Some people, but when you say what you're really saying is to optimize your business, right? So you're saying, yeah. I, I'm going to go out, I'm going to really, instead of calling everybody and listing $23,000 lots where mm -hmm. it takes time to list $23,000 lots, is I'm going to take that time and instead of going to list that $23,000 lot, I'm going to spend time you know, calling sellers that are $300,000 because those are the people I want to talk to. And then go out and get an appointment with that person and just speak with people or do activities that are um, augmented around meeting with those with those sellers or meeting with those buyers, right? Exactly. Because you can literally you can grow your business ten percent year over year after year doing the same number of transactions, but all you're doing is increasing your price point. So you're just focusing your laser beam onto a different price point. And you can do the exact same number of transactions every single year, but still increase your business by 10% or 20% or whatever you want to do. I mean, it's up to you what you want to go after. Well, but, well, you know, that, we, but you can add things like, um, you know, a processing fee to add, add additional income. You can um, add complimentary businesses. You know, you can partner with people on mortgage and title companies. I mean, there are all kinds of ways to um, yep. add money to the bottom line. And so I, I, I didn't know that we were talking about this, but I love this topic because I think, you know, this is something that's very important to me in my business right now. So you, you talked about that best year um, of doing all sorts of transactions. Um, and, and I guess at that point, you started to determine whether, you know, it was all still worth it at that point. So talk about, you know, when you started to figure out, I'm, I'm going to work. Smarter, right? Talk about how you made that mindset shift and then how you took action on that. So, um, so I've had a business coach since 2010, I believe, and I actually changed. So, when I moved over to um, EXP, I got a different coach okay. and he really got focused on my schedule and getting my schedule where it needed to be. And then I started, you know, because I told my coach, you know, my schedule is like, how the hell do you do that? Like, that's, that's crazy. Nobody can do that. 
And he's like, how, how well are you sticking to that schedule? And I was like, uh, not. <laughs> so we really started focusing on getting my schedule to where, not where it needed to be, but where I wanted it to be. Right. And then, so that's where you have to take in. And, you know, even with my business coaching, I talk a lot about real estate agents and self-employed business owners that you know, we think that we have to have four burners. There's, we have to have, you know, there are four burners in life. So we have our self, we have our family, we have our friends and we have our work. And so mm -hmm. we think to be really successful, we have to turn one of those burners off. So typically we turn off the self burner. So that's why you see a lot of real estate agents or self-employed people that have gained 40, 50, 60, 70 pounds. They, they eat poorly. They drink a lot of alcohol at all the happy hours. They, you know, they're just, you know, don't exercise. They sit in the car all day in front of their desk. And then the next thing is they, if we're going to be really, really successful, we have to turn off two burners. So typically we turn off our family. So, and I wasn't willing to do that. So I ended up, cause I had gained 30 pounds and you know, I wasn't spending the time with my kids that I wanted to I'm looking at my schedule and I put my personal goals first, which was to spend time with my family and to take care of myself. And then I put my business goals into that schedule. And in order to start making my business goals match my schedule, I had to start making shifts. And part of that was to look at my budget. And so, you know, in order to look at, okay, this is what I'm able to do in production with the amount of time that I have to spend every day on real estate. So now what are my costs that aren't bringing the return on the investment? That was by going through my profit and loss statements. And so then I just started cutting everything out and I was like, you know what? Like I can still create a really big business without all of these people and expenses that I pay for because really, they're not helping me get to where I need to go because they're actually taking more out of my bottom line and I can yes. keep more in my pocket with doing, you know, less essentially. And so that's where that kind of shift came was when I really started to look at my numbers and, you know, the trajectory of my business changed. And this year I've kept a lot more in my pocket and like exponentially more in my pocket. Yeah. And, you know, I have a lot less stress. And I work a lot more hours. And I've had a lot of time for me and the kids. And we've been able to take some really cool trips. And, you know, I have a great sphere around me of, you know, friends, family, and coworkers that when I do go on vacation, I have people that can help me out that aren't necessarily on my team per se. Sure. So they might be on my downline with the XP. And then the other part with the XP, because, you know, the biggest reason why people have teams is because they want to have something that's producing income when they're not there, correct? That's the whole point. But then when you look at a company like EXP with their revenue share, don't we get that? Yeah. So if you start looking at other opportunities and other ways to produce the same result, then you don't have to go sell as many freaking houses. You don't have to go you know, do all of that stuff. You can do what you want to do because we love what we do, and that's why we do it. But you can also... You can also supplement that income and make more through other avenues that are still related to your business. Yeah. So, I mean, that was really the shift because it was just like, you know what? Like I can, the money that I'm losing because I don't have that team, I can actually pick it up over here and not have as many headaches with going through that process. So, so was that a humbling experience for you or is it more of a relief? Oh my gosh. It was like, you know, my coach, he told me, he said, you need to be responsible responsible to before and when I kind of thought about it I was like you're right like I just need to do what I need to do and you want to talk about a weight off your shoulders just kind of like a F it <laughs> but a little more expletive yeah. that's kind of what it was is like you know I don't need all of this to do what I want to do and to have the goals that I want to do and have a, a big awesome business yeah and you know, that's why this year has been, you know, one of the best years. And I've done, gosh, by the end of the year, it'll be probably four, close to 400,000 GCI, somewhere that's in there. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And yeah. And I'll. Almost all of it, right? I'll do it. I wish. <laughs> I did end up firing. I didn't 
have this mind shift until about May of this past year. So <laughs> I did have well, about half the year sucking out the. Um, I think I appreciate you being able to share that. Um, my 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 thought about that is that, and this is probably an epidemic nationwide as it relates to implicit agent growing really games is that they're just living out this model that they mm -hmm. they're supposed to. It's not actually in alignment with who they are as a human being or their mm -hmm. actual goal for themselves, right? It's we have narrative in real estate that the pinnacle of success is to grow a real estate team and then step out of it, right? And yeah. people the thing about it is Valerie is people there are people out there that just want to be a real estate and they love what they they don't necessarily want to step away from the business. Exactly. They want to work in it. Yeah. So and then how they feel shame. Both, right? But yeah, yeah. they feel shame or they feel less than if they they're not following that you know, quote unquote red book model, which is a great model for some people, but not for all, right? Yeah, not for all at all. And it's you know, because the reason why I got into real estate was because I wanted to help people not have what happened to me happen to them. And right. so then what happens if I do that big team? Because I'll tell you that I had team members that works for me and I had employees that work for me that piss people off. But guess what? Guess who all comes back to? It comes back to me because I'm the team owner and my name's on the business. And so that kind of sucked. It's like, because I can't make other people little versions of me and do business like me. I can't, it's not possible. And so, you know, that hiring process was just, you know, super stressful for me to actually go through that. And I'm, I'm good. I'm great at reading people. I'm great at, you know, going through that process. Not so great at training people. Yeah. <laughs> not one of my strengths. Um, it's Cause I'm kind of, not yeah. a strength for most people, you know, that. Is, yeah. that, is that, did you come over from Keller Williams? Is that why you were talking about with Free Train Select? Yes, I was with them for 13 years. Wow. So. Okay, so let's, let's talk a little bit about that. Like, um, So you've been with the how long now? Do what? You've been with the for how long? Since the October of 2016, so two years. Okay, and how did you hear about it? So I had heard about it. Um, probably months before, uh, I, probably a couple months before I actually came over, but it just wasn't, I just wasn't there yet. Um, because I was doing really well with my business at KW and, you know, everything was working well. And then the wheels kind of fell off at our particular market center. Okay. And we started trading brokers and then we lost a team leader. Then a team leader came back in and then the MCA went to the team leader and then we weren't getting paid on time. And then it was just like, uh, you know, this is, you know, I have people, team members that are working for me and they're pissed off because they're not getting paid. And, you know, this is a problem. And it's like, you know, I do about EXP. And so sometimes I know that, you know, we talk about EXP, I talk about EXP a lot, but sometimes you're just not ready to hear it. Yeah. And you're just not in that place in your business. And so what happened was it became that, you know, I was in that place. I was like, I can't deal with um, this anymore. I need something different. I've been with the company. I've kind of, it has done its, where's the word I'm going for? It has run its course. Right. And, you know, I've kind of, experienced everything that I want to experience. There wasn't anywhere else that I wanted to go with KW. I didn't want to own a market center. I didn't want to be an OP. I had no desires to be in any part of leadership. I was on the ALC. Wasn't my favorite thing in the world. Um, okay. And I love, you know, I love being a leader. It just was how it was structured there. I just, it wasn't for me. Um, I wanted to get into being a maps coach, but the process to get into map the same email over and over again. Nobody got back in touch with me and it just got hard to do business with them. And so I was presented with the opportunity with EXP and they were really easy to do business with. And I was like, this is what I need because I don't need a company that's difficult for me to actually do business with. 
when I'm trying to help people, I'm trying to make things better. I'm trying to give input. And, you know, this just isn't, this is not working. So it's kind of how it went. How long was it after you heard that you actually made the move? Immediately. I don't okay. need, yeah, I'm, I'm not somebody, I didn't like make a decision. <laughs> I, don't really kind of, I don't really wait around. It's kind of, you know, you just talk about it and do it. Do what? Did you consider other brokerages? Not really. I mean, I've always done my due diligence just through time, and I've always asked questions to people. Um, I've always, you know, anytime I met with a Remax agent, I, you know, was inquisitive. I'm very good at asking questions. Um, anytime I met with any of the local brokerages, I asked because I was curious just from being with, you know, KW and trying to see how different things worked. And so I kind of knew how everything operated, and it wasn't really something I was interested in, to be honest. And um, I didn't see how they could ultimately help me on the long, long game. Cause I don't want to be, I don't want to work forever. You know, right. I do want to be able to retire, but I do see a lot of the local brokerages that when you retire, like you're done, like there's, you will not have any more income coming in. Um, you know, even if you build this great big real estate team, real estate business, it's not, you're not really going to sell it for that much. I right. mean, I think we think that they're worth a lot more than they are, but they're really not unless you create like a whole new brokerage and franchise. We've got enough of those already. I mean, it's just kind of, and even at that, it's not, it's not really worth it. And I know desire for that. So you know, looking at the opportunities between the stock options and the revenue share and, um, you know, I had the same number of people with, at KW in my downline as I have now at the current moment. And I was getting $7 and 21, between $7 and $22 a month. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, what, why do we even bring people into profit yeah. share? Because it's just not even like, and it was tough with, cause I was living in one market and I actually have my license in another market just yeah. because the culture in my current market wasn't, I wasn't interested and I couldn't, I couldn't rightfully bring people into that when I didn't even want to be there. Like that wasn't fair, I guess. So, so this was kind of like the next evolution for you and your business. And now you've been here, um, the dust has settled on your transition. Um, what are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to, to like sharing with more people about EXP and actually bringing more people into the company and helping them see all the different opportunities out there because uh, we have to understand that, you know, there is more to selling real estate than just selling real estate. And there are other ways to, um, you know, produce income and to, you know, have that nest egg. So like how cool would it be if your revenue share every single month covered your nut to crack. And so anything that you made in real estate went into a travel fund or your kid's college fund or, you know, down payment for a new house or investment properties or, you know, whatever that was like, that's pretty rad. And like, we have those opportunities with EXP and it's just getting purposeful with it on a day-to-day -day basis to achieve whatever outcome you want to achieve. It's been really cool to see what some of my friends have done that are doing it consistently and that are bringing and educating and teaching people and helping them grow bigger businesses. And, you know, that's what I love to do. Like people that come into my downline, I want to help them be better and I want to help them grow their business and I want to teach them all of the processes from going from the manual to the automated because that's been one of my really big passions the past year. And I've worked a ton on it through a program called active campaign. And, um, I'm actually unrolling where we've been brainstorming the name of a business for it. Cause I've created all of these, um, it's an evergreen webinar product that okay. teaches you how to go. Yeah. So it teaches you how to take your business from a manual business to an automated business in 28 days. Okay. And, um, Oh, it's awesome. And, you know, because we don't even think about the process. So, you know, for example, you get a house under contract 
And so what I do right now is I can drop the buyer into an automation. It sends them a handwritten note, um, you know, just a note that's personally addressed to them, congratulating them on their new home purchase. They get an automated email that's personalized to them with a congratulations video. It gives them a list of moving companies. It gives them a list of um, inspectors and different service providers they're going to need through the home buying process. And then, you know, a co and, and I tell them, I said, look out in your email a couple of days. I'm going to give you a video about the home inspection and what pitfalls to look out for. So then I send them another email in four days and it tells them, you know, look, these are the things to look out for. These are the common things that we see. And I have them for buyers and sellers. So in the seller one, I tell them, you know, get your gutters clean, make sure to extend your downspouts, like all the things that typically come up in a home inspection. Right. Um, and so, you know, I've been able to automate this process and people believe that it's a really authentic process because I have created it for them, but it's educating them through the process. And I don't have to create that email over and over and over again for every single person. And so, you know, and that just, it's, it's providing a top notch customer service. They don't come to me with any questions because they know all the answers and they have these great resources. Right. So I think there's things that we can do to improve how we do business with our clients. And if you're doing, you know, 300 transactions or, or, 10 transactions or whatever you're doing there's it's not possible for us to have the life that we want and provide the high high level of customer service in a manual business i mean it's just it's not i mean exp wouldn't be a technologically based company if it was it's like it's just you know that's getting away from the brick and mortar and getting away but you can still make it personal without you know, just completely making it like one of those newsletters you get or, you know, happy holidays or any of those like vanilla box type things. Sure. Um, so how are you, you talked about um, looking forward to, you know, spreading the word about EXP or getting EXP out there. How are you educating me about EXP right now? So right now um, I have processes in place. So like when people show my properties, um, like any of my listings, you know, I'll start the conversation. So I tell them, you know, thank you. I give them a little bit of information about, you know, my company and, you know, if they like to start, you know, just have a conversation. I ask them questions about their company. What do they love about, you know, the company that they work for? And so you just start engaging and having little conversations. If I get a LinkedIn request from somebody that's with a different brokerage, you just start having a conversation and it's not, sometimes you plant the seed and sometimes people are all in, yeah. you know, it just depends because sometimes people are sending you the friend request because they know which company you work for and they want to be all in. Yeah. So you just never know, but it's, but you can't just go to people and say, you need to join like this company. Cause it's, that's where you're not authentic. That's where you're, you know, kind of in your face. And if you truly want to help somebody, understand what company they're at because the company they're at might be a perfect fit for them. They might be a terrible fit for EXP. They yeah. might, you just don't know if you don't ask the right questions and you truly engage with them and start having, you know, a true real conversation. Yeah. And that's where I think that, you know, being authentic comes into play. Yeah. Well said. You talk about like being a bad fit for EXP, but who do you think is a good fit for EXP? I think that people that are, you know, definitely self self starters and people that, especially have having started with the XP when there were I think like six hundred agents or eight hundred agents. I mean, it's grown a lot, and there's been some growing pains, and so there has to be a level of patience there. Mm -hmm. And um, like I had a lot of stuff that was set up that was independent of my previous company. And so it was really simple. So if stuff wasn't working right with the XP, it didn't really matter because I had it set up independently through something else. Um, so I think somebody that has, that understands growing pains, but they still want to be part of a, you know, something that's growing. Like I've yeah. sat, I sat back and looked at, you know, like Mike Brody with KW and he, 
I mean, he's getting over a million dollars a year in profit share, but he started with KW when they were, you know, tiny and yeah. a tiny company, like as big as we are now. Right. And so now look what he gets. And, you know, so if people can see that opportunity, but they also, you know, love selling real estate, they love being able to, you know, send, you know, the e-signatures out and that they understand, you know, take the time to learn conversion. And I tell everybody, I said, pick one system a month and master it. So if you want to learn about conversion, only work on conversion for a month. If you want to get sky slope nailed down, work on sky slope for a month, learn everything about it, get really good at it. And, you know, so somebody that understands that and can work through it and just doesn't, you know, be like, Oh my God, I'm drinking from a fire hose. <laughs> Cause that's what it feels like. Cause you get, you're like, Oh, here's your, here's your 50 logins to all of these different, you know, awesome things that you can use to help grow your business. It's like, Oh my gosh, what do I do with all these things? It's like, right. well, just pick, one. pick one a month, pick one a week. I mean, however fast you go through stuff. And so, you know, that's what I think would be a good fit. Let me ask you, um, cause you know, you talked about there are people that are all in, right? they, they LinkedIn and, and whichever LinkedIn, you know, they know what you're all about and they immediately want to find out more. And then there are people that are on the other end of the spectrum that are, uh, you know, friending you on LinkedIn and they don't care anything about it, they're real estate. And then there's everybody in between. So that guy or gal that ain't your broker out there that's watching or listening to us, uh, that may be considering a move um, or is just doing their due diligence to find out more about why this company is growing so fast. Uh -huh. so what would be your message for them today? I think my message would be just, you know, have a conversation with somebody. And, you know, I've sent people, like, and I've had people send people to me because, you know, I've had a team. And so and maybe I'd send them to somebody else in EXP that has a team. Like, hey, you know, I used to have a team. I don't need more. But, you know, Mike has a team. So maybe, you know, talk to him because he uses more of the systems with the team. So I think, you know, just I kind of broke up a little bit. So I don't know exactly. I think I know what your question was. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but, you know, I that's what I, I, what I said. So we know that there are people on both ends of the spectrum. There's people that are gone home and really want to find out more. Some of them are even you know, moving over. And then there's people on the other end who either don't care or maybe they're just wanting to learn more. Uh -huh. And so I'm just curious about your message to that agent or that broker out there who's listening or watching. Um, you know, what would you say to that person? Oh, I'd say I'd say go all in with learning more, but maybe not go all in with. I mean, if you're like me, you just you're in, <laughs> like you're just all in. But if you you know if you're not sure, go all in with learning about EXP. Because you don't have, you can get into the world and explore around and go to our training without being an agent with DXP. So do that, you know, go all in with that part of it, but you know, take the time or set and make this decision by, and you know, write down a list of the pros and cons that you see throughout that research process, and yeah. you know, list the pro and pros and cons with your current company, and you know, then weigh them side by side and see what's going to be the best fit for you. Because ultimately, you know, it's not a fit for everybody, and you just want to find what the best fit is for you. Absolutely. Well, I, am, Valerie, I so appreciate you, and Jeanette, thank you for letting me know that I'm breaking up. I will definitely not be doing this show for my Westminster office again until I can figure out some uh, remuneration for our internet. But I appreciate you putting up with me. One more thing before I let you go is I want to find out um, how our audience can connect with. So they can connect with me through Facebook. Um, they can shoot me an email. It's just v.easter at exp realty or you know anything through Messenger, Facebook Messenger as well, since they're seeing it on Facebook. So cool. That's, Valerie, thank you so much. And uh, let's definitely reconnect when we have a better internet connection. If I can do anything perfect. for you, please let me know. All right, and likewise. Thanks. All right, thanks. Bye bye. Bye.